No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. Old Freeman here and today my friends we're going to be doing a mainstream gin comparison. So this video is going to be aimed a little bit more towards perhaps people who are new to gin and not that experienced yet and want to know a little bit more about it. So my regular viewers and subscribers, uh, you're gonna, this is going to be sort of uh, going over a little bit of old ground for you. But for those of you who weren't paying attention, feel free to watch as well. So what I've done here, I've tried to pick a selection of core gins that are available throughout the world because obviously people watch this channel from all over the globe and I want to make it relevant to everybody. I think I've done a bit of research, I think this is the gang that everyone's going to relate to and going to be able to uh, purchase in their country. So here goes my friends, mainstream gin comparison with old Freeman. So my friends, let's start at the bottom, shall we? And I do mean the very bottom, because this little fellow, and I just, ow! This little fellow is Gordon's Gym, which I'm pretty sure that everyone on the planet is going to be familiar with. It does come in a different coloured bottle when you go across the Atlantic to America and that side, uh, but I'm assured, I've done some research, I'm, I'm assured it is the same stuff. And my regular viewers and subscribers will know my feelings on Gordon's because it's not a great gin. However, it is more often than not uh, where people start their gin journey. It was where I started my gin journey. I first tried it and they must, you know, they must be doing something right. To be fair to them, because I give them a terrible time on this show, they must absolutely hate me. But given their dues, they must be doing something right, because it sort of hooked my interest, okay? I, I would describe it as, it's sort of the bog, the boggiest of all the bog standards gins, okay? It's got a slight essence of uh, what you might uh, sort of experience when you enter the gin world. But I do mean slight and very slight. I mean, the thing is, in the 80s, you know, that this was kind of, and probably the 90s as well, it's pretty much the only gin that was available. When you went to a pub, it was Gordon's. You asked for gin, you got Gordon's, and people didn't know any better. But... Things have moved on now. Gins have got a lot better and the gin market has just transformed. And I feel that this central, I mean, I feel they haven't really sort of moved with the times. They, admittedly, they have brought out some different flavours, some orange one, lemon, uh, pink berry there and the peach one there. But they're, they're basically sort of trying to just... It's, it's the same old product with different flavours in it. Admittedly, though, that was quite nice. It worked quite nice, but, but I think it was just masking this flavour. And I think, I've said many times before, I think they should go back to the drawing board and make a completely new Gordon's and just use all that experience because they've got over 200 years of experience and use it and make something better. So my advice really is, if you started on this, great, no problem, well done to you, but there is a lot better stuff out there to try. So give this one a miss, move on to the next one. And indeed, the next one might well, as it was in my case, be this little fellow, which is, of course, the world famous Bombay Sapphire. Not made in Bombay, of course, made in Basingstoke, but I believe they do source stuff from, uh, from the Far East. And this one was, is sort of a very often touted as kind of a sort of a more upmarket. It was to me anyway, a slightly more upmarket version of Gordon's. And I tried it and I was like, oh, I, I, I wasn't really thinking. It was, it was different, but I didn't stop and say to myself, yeah, okay, but is it better? Because my friends, it is not. You get... Oh, the Bombay people must absolutely hate me on this show because you just, I just think this is a bad gin. I mean, it's all down to personal preference. This is just my opinion. I'm so, sure some people will love it, but just straight away from the smell, there's a slightly, I've said this loads of times before, a slightly chemically essence to it, which just makes it kind of unpleasant to me. And if I was distilling a gin, if I tasted this and, you know, it's about to go out, I thought, here we go, we've, been, we've tried lots of different uh, uh, sort of combinations of botanicals. This is the one we've come up with. If I tried that, I would not, I'm sorry, but I would not be happy with sending that out into the market. And to be fair to them, I'd like to give them a fair crack of the rip. I've tried all their other ones as well. Uh, this is the Bombay East. Didn't like that very much either. There was a really expensive, expensive version called the Bombay Sapphire Star of Bombay, which was possibly even worse, but double the price, not very good. However, the English Estate Limited Edition, that one up there, very nice. They added mint and rose hip to it. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Also, the Bombay Original, which you can't get everywhere, but they actually took a couple of ingredients away in that one, I think, and it actually improved it. But this central one, again, I think they should go away and rethink it or think it or, or at least replace it with the uh, English estate or the Bombay original. So my advice to that one is don't 
Try it if you want, if you want to experience the whole gin journey, but really, these two fellows here, give them a miss because they're not great gins. However, my friends, this is where things start to take a bit of a step up because this little fellow is Plymouth Gin. Now, if you don't know where Plymouth is, it is in the west country of, I don't know why I'm saying over there, that, that may be west, I'm not sure. It's in the west country of England and everyone talks a little bit like that. Who are you bloody bastard? A little bit like Sam Wise from uh, Lord of the Rings. And it's just a proper gin, you know. It's what gin should be, you know. It's, it's not sort of out there and world changing and weird and wonderful flavors. It's just got the perfect balance of juniper and the citrus notes in there and the angelica root and all the, everything in there. It's just what I would say the perfect kind of core gin and it's excellent and I would suggest that is an excellent next step on the old gin journey. Now then this next one I've included because it is extremely popular and available world worldwide. It is a Scottish gin and it is called Hendrix gin although you'll notice this says Nerissa's gin that's because this is a personalized bottle that my girlfriend Nerissa was uh, uh, gifted to her when she left her job but I can assure you it is Hendrix gin in there. Now then this is an interesting one because personally I'm not a big fan however the reason I've included it is one it is available worldwide and two it's very very popular but the thing is for me here this is just so you know this is just purely for your information one of the main ingredients in this little fellow is cucumber okay cucumber and rose now personally this all comes down to personal preference of course I don't like cucumber in any way shape or form you would never catch me eating or scoffing down on a cucumber because I think it's vile, I think it's disgusting. And to me, to put it in a drink seems crazy. And a lot of gins very often these days will come with a slice of cucumber in it and that really me off. If they ever try and put that in my gin, I just send it back immediately. I made the point of what's the, you know, why do you, why would you want to put a vegetable in your gin? And then people pointed out to me, oh, I think you're finding it's actually a fruit. Well, I don't care what it is, to be honest. It's still a cucumber. So my advice here is if you, uh, if you like it, if you like cucumber, you're probably going to love this one. However, if you like me and think that uh, that way madness lies, probably give this one a miss. So then, now we get to the business end, and I put the good old faithful Mr. Tanqueray over there. Now this again is an interesting one here. Tanqueray is kind of in line with the Plymouth, I'd say. Just your sort of core gin. Nothing weird and wonderful, perfect balance of juniper and everything in there, uh, and an excellent gin. And probably, I think it was the third gin on my gin journey. I went that, that, and that. And at the time, I was like, oh man, yes, this is what it's all about. However, I think I'm going to revisit the whole, uh, an actual, a, a few of my old gins, because I reviewed them way back when, and your taste can change a little bit. I, I must say, I tried Tanqueray, Tanqueray in a bar the other day, the standard Tanqueray, this one, because it has many derivatives, and I was a bit like, you know what, it's, it's, it's nice, it's okay, but it's kind of not not quite as world changing as I remember when I first tried it. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's not a bad gin by any stretch of the imagination, but perhaps not as world breaking as it was once before, but definitely, definitely a, a, a good gin. However, my friends, if you really want to go for the best all round gin of the mainstream, it is obviously my good old friend the trusty beef eater because it is just excellent it's just it's in my opinion it's hands down the best uh mainstream gin you can get the one that's sort of available absolutely everywhere and i mean everywhere wherever you see gin there are other gins you know that are sort of i would say perhaps i've enjoyed more but perhaps they're not uh as readily available and that's what the whole was the whole point of this video it's just the exquisite blend of orange peels and lemon peels but then the beautiful sort of perfect scattering of juniper and the coriander and it just they've balanced it a lot of gins have the very the main the same sort of core ingredients but it's all about balancing balancing them to get them work in perfect harmony and beef eater does it 
absolutely exquisite, please. It's just nice to know whenever you go to a bar and you think to yourself, you know, oh, I can't be bothered to look at the menu, you know, you don't know what they've got or the, or the waiter doesn't know what they've got. Just say, look, have you got beef eater? And they say, yes, just go, oh, just have that. And you know, you just can have the best possible gin and tonic. It's awesome. And the best thing as well, I find I can drink it a little bit stronger than usual gins as well, which is, which is always a bonus, obviously. So let's look at the prices of these fellas, shall we? See what they're gonna set you back. Now the Gordons, obviously, as you'd expect, Expect it's bottom rung of the ladder. The one thing it's got going for it, it is bloody cheap, my friend. So over here, you're gonna pay 13 pounds for it, and it'll be the same in America, about 13 dollars and about 14 euros. So whatever you say, at least it's very, very cheap. The Bombay Sapphire, a little bit more, which is kind of weird because you're paying more and not definitely not getting any more. In fact, I'd say you're possibly getting a little bit less. So Bombay will cost you about 20 pounds over here, about 25 dollars in the US, which is about 22 euros but as I said definitely you're not getting anything more for your money there. The old Plymouth pretty well priced a little bit more expensive but definitely worth it so uh, Plymouth you're gonna be paying about 22 pounds over here when, and it's gonna be about 33 dollars and uh, 24 euros so definitely if you see those if you see those in the shops and you're thinking why is this one a little bit more than those there most definitely is a reason and that is the fella to go for if you are faced with that little choice there. Now get a load of this, Hendrix, this one here, is the most expensive of this little gang here. So Hendrix is about 30 pounds over here, $36 in the US and 33 euros. Now, I always say you don't need to pay any more than 30 pounds. That's right at my top bracket, okay? And personally, I don't think it's worth it. Now, Tanqueray here, funnily enough, is pretty much identical to the Bombay Sapphire down here. So, in fact, it is identical. Well, it obviously varies from place to place. From where I look today, uh, Tanqueray is £20 over here, $25 in the US, or €22. Euros. So, faced with the choice of those two, which, to be honest, you very often are, it is no question, my friends. Cast aside this vile fellow and go for that every single time. However, my friends, not only is the Beef Eater the, by far the best of the mainstream gins, it's miraculously, this doesn't happen in any other sphere, um, it is among the cheapest. It's not quite as cheap as the Gordon, but it's not far off. So here in the UK, that bottle will cost you £16 and it will cost you $20 in the US and €17. Euros. So it, isn't that extraordinary that you can get the best but not have to pay the big prices for it? I, I, I don't know much about wine, but I'm pretty sure if you want to get the best wine, you will have to pay a, a much higher, much, much more inflated price. You'll have to pay a lot of money compared to the worst wine, which will be very cheap. Gin, this is not the case. Yet yeah, you can buy expensive gins. There are some ridiculously expensive gins out there, but I don't think you should buy them because why would you when you can get pretty much, you know, top tier gin amongst the top and the best gins in the world for some of probably the lowest prices in the world as well. Isn't that a most amazing thing? And that's one of the best things about gin. You don't have to be a, a, a millionaire or very, very rich to get the absolute best. And I think that's just wonderful and why I love gin. One of the reasons, many reasons I love gin so much. So my friends, I hope my regular viewers and subscribers, guys, I hope you don't mind me going over the old ground a little bit, but I think occasionally it's important to do this so we can invite some new gin lovers into the throng and join us in our little community here. And indeed, if you are one of the new gin lovers and you liked what you saw today and you think you found it useful, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the like button on the video and of course the little bell icon so you get notified when all my new videos come out. And if anyone wants to support the channel, then please head over to my Patreon page as well. But as ever, until next time guys, take care, stay safe, thank you to all my patrons, and keep drinking the gin.